So after receiving the news from a man representing Daniel Bryan's doctor that he's not clear to wrestle, this gives the very happy and in love authority the chance to finally officially strip Daniel Bryan from his championships. And even though the audience at the arena knew what was coming because above the ring were two dangling championships. This could have been the authority's opportunity to recreate the championship or at least use one of those two belts to represent their company. But that's not too important, just something the authority could have done. And how do I feel about the championship being stripped from Daniel Bryan? Well, look what he's achieved. He's gone through Triple H, gone through the authority, gone through Orton, gone through Batista, became champion, gone through Kane, and then an accident happens. And instead of the WWE finding ways for him to keep hold of that championship but not defend it, hear many times of him saying no, 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 I feel given him the chance to recover and given... Um, the WWE a fighting champion is what's best for business quoting the authority right there taking nothing away from Daniel Bryan I felt he could have gone through other wrestlers he could have overcame more odds before losing his run losing his championship at a later pay-per-view but right now I feel this is what's best for business and this then brings on to the stretcher match. With Daniel Bryan not being at Money in the Bank, does Kane go into the ladder match, which is now for the championship, or does he stay in the stretcher match? And for the WWE to use John Cena, who at the moment is fighting against the authority, to replace Daniel Bryan. And I know many fans out there would dislike that, but it's a bit of match. It's a way with John Cena recently fighting against the authority to punish him. Yes, the result may be the same, but it's a bit of match and it leaves us with other candidates to be in the ladder match. Which Triple H announces the first uh, few participants, Del Rio. Orton who gets thrown in there because the authority can do that and Orton being a part of evolution Later we have Sheamus defeating Bad News Barrett to earn his spot in the match and Cesaro defeating Rob Van Dam to earn his spot So so far there's Alberto Del Rio, Orton, Sheamus and Cesaro At the minute it's looking like there are some old timers in there guys who have already been champion and then they've got Cesaro. At the moment, my money's on Cesaro, my want's on Cesaro. I think this would be great for Cesaro. As for Barrett, who didn't make it into this match, don't people think, oh, well, that's him pushed back down to the bottom. No, it is not. I think Barrett is going to get a mid-card championship match, and then he's going to build his, continue to build his way up. Because with this character, with the fan base behind Bad News Barrett, I don't see why the WWE would knock him back down just because he didn't make it in Money in the Bank. But this is me hoping and I feel that the opener achieved that as well as hyping up the main event but I'll get to that later and fans because of Daniel Bryan not being there there was people on Twitter, people on Facebook saying I'm not sure how to feel about Money in the Bank now our champion should be there. Daniel Bryan should be there. With me, I was looking the other side of the mountain where Daniel Bryan's going to come back with the fans cheering for him. And yes, he may get his rematch back then because he didn't officially lose it. But that's a whole other story yet to come. And if it is going to be Cesaro versus Bryan, what a great match that's going to be, right? Even though we had a group of OK matches on Raw, there was only two parts that really mattered. The Money in the Bank involvement and the Shield involvement. Like we had Rusev defeating Ryder, Rybacks were defeating Goldus and R-Truth, where after the match, uh, Cody teases a mystery new opponent that Goldus has never seen before, 
to be his tag team partner next week. We had the Usos defeating uh, Bandango and a Dancing Sandow. I, I'm not going to complain anymore about Sandow because the WWE are treating him in this horrendous way and I'm not liking it, but the WWE don't seem to care. I'm hoping something clicks in the future, but right now, each and every week, WWE are not giving me that hope. Bo Dallas defeats Xavier Woods, Paige defeats Alicia Fox, and Jack Swagger defeats Santino. So you can see the matches may have been entertaining, there may be some built up story in the upcoming weeks, but for this Raw, I didn't overly care. I got some enjoyment out of it, but not really enough to give you great detail about the matches. So the second part of Raw that mattered was the Shield segment and the main event segments. And after Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose takes out 3MB to stop them trash talking, you have both men on the mic. And I feel when you're trying to break up a faction or a group, a tag team, to push them forward, having their own mic time, having their own spots in matches is important. And I think this segment showed each man brilliantly. You had Dean Ambrose, who's talking about how Seth Rollins, in his promo late in the night, needs to talk as Seth Rollins, not as Triple H. And how after that, he's going to kick their ass. Brilliant. Setting that up for later. Roman Reigns says how a brother should not attack another brother. And how he's going to go after Randy Orton first. Probably at Battleground. And then after Triple H. Possibly at SummerSlam. It's good and all. But maybe Roman Reigns is going to do the other Evolution members. While Ambrose gets Rollins. I just thought right now your frustration on being attacked would be on Seth Rollins. So both men would go after Seth Rollins. Maybe this will happen at Money in the Bank, which makes sense. Finish Seth Rollins, go on to your next targets and leave Ambrose to continue the feud with Rollins as his match is going into later pay-per-views. But later in the night, you have Seth Rollins speak. And this is the part that I was going to be interested in. Because he didn't get his proper sight at Smackdown last week. So Raw was going to be it. And Rollins says how um, attacking the Shield was no big deal. It was best for business. How he created the Shield. And how they're not his brothers. They're his business partners. And now he's left, the shield and nothing, uh, Reigns and Ambrose are nothing without him. And that was his say. I thought Seth Rollins really took that mic and made his own. It was good explanation. He was very confident on the mic. And to be honest, all three men, from what I've said from their promos, were brilliant. I enjoyed it. I thought this was great. I got to hear the words, all three of them targeting what they're doing next but then out comes uh, Dean Ambrose and Rome Reigns to attack and just as soon as they get in the ring lights go off lights go on and there's the Wyatt family ready to set up the main event and the idea was it was going to be a handicap match unless uh, the Shield could pick a third member a third uh, partner Please, not another member. And it happened to be John Cena. And with John Cena out there to save the day, you could pretty much predict what was going to happen in the main event. As John Cena, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose defeated the Wyatt family. I would have been happy with a handicap match. Let's say John Cena got attacked backstage by Kane, setting up that possible match at Money in the Bank. Then you would have had... The Wyatt family defeating the Shield to, in a way, back up with what Seth Rollins said in his promo. The Shield are not as strong or as or strong without Seth Rollins being there. But it didn't happen to be that way. The faces get the win, and the end of Raw weren't 
bad because in my opinion the part that really made raw was the uh the shield mic segments and i'm with this i'm looking forward to how they branch up to money in the bank bottom this week how they branch to battleground and SummerSlam. because with the teasing of possible matches coming ahead i'm looking forward to this seth Rollins, i think he will go into a feud with dean ambrose first not a bad view not a bad match Something exciting to see, but people, please share your thoughts on Monday Night Raw in the comment section below. And I've been NJ with a few distractions here at home, and you guys watching this video, and goodbye.